Do you want your midlife crisis dramas to have a little bit of supernatural in them? Well, then Repossession will be just for you. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. I'm here to talk to you about Repossession, which is a Singaporean film that is getting its North American digital release on December 21st, 2021. So it's already happened. It was actually last year. Sorry for the delay. It was a little bit of a crazy Christmas and New Year's time, but I'm back and let's talk about Repossession. So it is a Singaporean film that is a drama with a little tiny bit of horror supernatural aspects. It's an interesting combination. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about it. My hot take is I actually really liked the drama. I thought it was well acted and I liked the kind of midlife crisis and the, the ordeals that Jim goes through, but I actually didn't like the supernatural aspects. I kind of thought it would have been better without those. So all that being said, I think it's a rental. I still liked a lot about it, but the, the, the supernatural horror side, which is kind of what drew me to this film, just didn't really pan out for me. So I'm going to talk to you a little about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and just have a really quick talk about the ending. So if you don't want to know what happens in the film, and there is kind of a twist at the end, so you might not want to know before watching, then turn this off. Go check out the film. It's available digitally so you can see it anywhere. But if you don't care if you've already seen the film or you want to talk a little bit about the ending, let's keep going. So Repossession focuses on Jim who has kind of built up this perfect life around him. He's 50, he's in a high paying job, he has a great apartment in Singapore, has a beautiful view, he has a wife and a kid, and his life is pretty much perfect until he loses his job. And then in order to kind of salvage his pride and keep up his appearances, he does a lot of stuff to try to keep the status quo without telling his wife, without telling his daughter, and trying to figure out on his own. And as you can imagine, that leads to more and more problems. And throughout all of this, there are some issues from Jim's past that he's dealing with, some slightly supernatural aspects. There seems to be some entity that continues to either appear or at least speak in his head. There's a lot of light supernatural aspects to this film. And as Jim kind of continues down this spiral, as, as you know, he has to make these tough life decisions and kind of confronts his pride, the supernatural presence gets stronger and stronger. And then towards the end, it actually kind of comes to a head uh, and there's a there's kind of a final, like, I guess, final conflict. There's, there's a final confrontation, at least, uh, where more is made clear. So things I liked about this movie. The first is the drama. Like I said, I think this is a better drama than it was a supernatural horror film. And I kind of wish it would have leaned on it. There, there was some good emotional aspects. There was good acting. And I liked the, I liked Jim's story of him kind of his, his life crumbling and him trying to keep up appearances. I thought that would have been a great overall film now maybe that's already been done maybe that's why they added this kind of supernatural aspect but i thought that the drama was good and then the supernatural parts felt a little shoehorned maybe because there were only so few of them and also they i don't think the supernatural side was very well done so the second thing i really liked is the slow build-up i know i said that there's just a little bit of supernatural at the end but i actually kind of liked that overall now when the supernatural finally came to a head it, it didn't feel worth that overall payoff but the build-up is great because it's you get a real good sense of Jim, his life, his family, kind of his pride and the things that are happening around him and the lengths that he will go to kind of keep up appearances. Uh, and I also really liked that the, the it didn't have a big supernatural kind of reveal, I guess, until late in the movie. Um, I think it was about an hour, a little over an hour was when you first kind of had a big supernatural experience, like a big horror experience. Before that, there were little things that were like, like voices in his head that he would hear he would see like an entity quickly and then it'll disappear or you would get some flashbacks of his life where strange things happen like his friends started acting weird and you could tell something was going on but it wasn't kind of it didn't kind of grab you or grab him like it did uh about an hour in uh the third thing i really liked is gerald chu the the main character the, the main actor for jim i thought he was really good he had a, a kind of an unassuming understated acting style and he really kind of brought Jim to life. Uh, you know, you got a good sense of his character. He didn't have a ton of emotion until, you know, towards the end, but that's also Jim's character. I thought that Gerald Chu did a really good job of kind of moving this film forward and keeping the focus on Jim, because that's what it was. The focus was on Jim and his life and kind of how it was falling apart and some of the lengths he would go to kind of preserve that. And the last thing I really liked, I really liked the ending. I don't think the ending kind of salvaged the entire film, especially the supernatural things I didn't like, but I thought the ending itself was really well done. There's a little bit of a reveal at the end. I'm going to talk to you about that after I talk about the things I didn't like. And it has this really powerful end scene. It at least left the film on a high note for me. So things I didn't love about this film. The first is, I guess, the supernatural side. 
I don't think it was that well done. Maybe it was the effects. Like, the effects weren't great. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But it also just kind of felt like a distraction. I really wanted to have more about Jim and the drama in his life and his family situation and how he was going to confront these issues. And the supernatural side just felt like it kind of came in and, I don't know, it kind of distracted you from the overall story and then left. It kind of popped in here and there. And it didn't really feel like it was that well meshed in with Jim's overall story. Now, towards the end, you it, it kind of melded better but it never really felt like it was a good part of this overall uh experience that you were having uh, the second thing i didn't love are the effects now, now they weren't bad but it just didn't feel like they were at the same level as the drama you know, so when someone was kind of possessed by this demon there, there's like this demon or entity that is following jim throughout his life and kind of shows up in opportune times and kind of, and takes over his friends and forces his friends to do bad things to push jim into these emotional experiences these emotional turmoils that he has uh and so what happens when they were kind of possessed by this entity their makeup became weird became, i guess more ghostly a little bit of a greenish tinge and their eyes you know they, they, they express their eyes a lot and so that was really the only change when they became possessed now the actors did a good job i mean they changed you know their personas they changed their how they were kind of carrying themselves you could tell that something weird was going on because of the acting I just thought the effects just didn't feel like enough. It felt like, you know, it was almost kind of slapped on or it added. And, and it didn't feel like it was at the same level as some of the drama and the acting in the film. And then also when the kind of demonic entity really appears for the first time, it is basically like a person in a kind of spandex latex suit uh, with like claw hands. And it just, again, it didn't feel up to the level of the rest of the film. Now, maybe that's just... You know, it could just be budget. Maybe they didn't really have a ton of budget for a lot of really big effects. And I understand that. That's fine. You know, that's, that is what it is. But it just, again, it felt like you didn't need to have those because this film could have stood on its own just on the drama and some of Jim's uh, tumultuous backstory. And the last thing I did not love is some of the delivery felt a little forced. That wasn't bad. It wasn't super distracting, but it was a little distracting. And it did kind of hamper some of the scenes that I thought could have been more dramatic because of the delivery that didn't really sound natural to me. Um, but again, I thought that this film had really good drama. Supernatural was a little bit of a distraction, but I also thought it had a pretty good ending. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the ending, just a few quick thoughts about the ending. So again, if you haven't seen this film, if you don't want to know what happens in this film, stop watching this now because there will be big spoilers here. So so the film deals mostly with Jim's kind of crumbling life around him, but there are flashbacks to big traumatic events that happened to him growing up. So there's one that happened when he was a kid, when the demon possessed this girl that he was playing with. I think it might've been his sister. It could have been his friend. I wasn't hundred percent sure, but she caught with the demon forces girl to attack Jim. And so Jim then had to kill the girl to protect himself. Uh, and so he kills her in a particularly brutal way. He like slams her head against a brick slide until she's dead, which was a pretty, it wasn't like gruesomely done. It was a pretty kind of dramatic uh, way for a little boy to kill someone. Uh, later on, when he's in the military, uh, the demon possesses his friend and kind of causes that friend to uh, point a gun at Jim and point a gun at their commanding officer. And then eventually the demon, you know, causes the friend to kill himself, to, to shoot himself in the head. Later in the film, uh, it possesses his best friend who has been kind of like advising him throughout all this. He's the one that knows kind of the state of Jim's life and that the demon causes him to step out in front of a car. He basically was like, there was a scene where Jim was kind of contemplating suicide because his life was crumbling around him. And the demon was like, you should have jumped, you know, but if you're not brave enough to jump, there's plenty of other ways to die. And then, you know, the forces his friend to kind of step out into the road. And then later at the very, very end, again, spoilers, 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 uh, it possesses his daughter and his wife and causes them to attack him. And then I guess he has to fight them back to, to defend himself. But what you get at the very end, you get, you get a few hints here and there throughout, but you get kind of a, a more uh, substantial reveal at the end. At, at, at the very end, it seems like when Jim kind of comes to after the last attack, you get a sense that Jim is actually the one who is doing these deeds he's the one that is causing these deaths you saw a little bit of it when his soldier friend killed himself because it looked like maybe jim 
grabbed the trigger. It might have been an accident, but it looked like there, he was somewhat involved there. He was clearly involved when he killed that little girl, although, you know, I guess in his mind, he was protecting himself. You don't get that sense when his friend, uh, I think it was Vinod or Vinod, uh, killed himself, but, you know, Jim could have been there. And then you kind of get a hint uh, that Jim killed his family. And all this seems to stem from his pride and his, like, need to keep up appearances. I think the underlying message, and I could be wrong on this, but this is kind of what I got from this film, is that Jim is a very prideful person. You, you get that throughout the film because he refuses to kind of accept his uh, fate and really kind of tell anyone around him what is going on. And so you get the sense that perhaps he has killed people in the past who have either hurt his pride or or wronged him in order to keep up his appearances, to keep himself feeling strong and, and whatnot. And so that's kind of the, the revelation that you get at the end is that maybe he has been involved with all of these deaths and then the demon, the quote unquote demon is really his pride that is forcing him to do these things. I mean, not really forcing him, he's making these choices, but it is, it is some aspect of him that is causing these deaths. And you get that sense at the very end because he wakes up and he's like in the room with the bodies of his wife and daughter. And he's, he's like in their blood, like his hands are kind of covered in blood. And he kind of appears to realize, I think at, at the very end, kind of all those illusions kind of crash down. I think maybe he comes to the realization that there is no demon uh, and that he is the one doing it. And that's why he has this horrible moment where he just kind of like screams in his old condo that is being repossessed with the bodies of his wife and daughter around him and like the blood all, all around him as well. And I thought it was a pretty powerful scene because they also do this little thing where when he starts to scream, all the sound cuts out. So it just becomes quiet for a very long time, like a lot longer than I expected with uh, Jim's character just kind of emoting with no sound. And I thought that that was a really interesting way to end it. I liked it a lot. It kind of, it held that a little longer than I was expecting it to, almost a little longer than I was comfortable with. And then it, and then it went to the credits. So I really liked that. I thought that that was an interesting twist at the end. There were a few previews that this might be what was happening. But you don't really get a good sense until the very end. And that's when you kind of have this idea that maybe Jim is the one doing it. And then when he realizes it, you have this pretty emotional ending scene that I really liked. I thought that the, uh, the film kind of came together at the end. I don't think it fully made up for some of the supernatural side of things. But I thought that that was an interesting way to end it. And I did like how it was put together. Now, that being said, I think this film could have been better just as a pure drama. Just a drama kind of following Jim and his like, downward spiral. I thought that would have been an interesting way. But again, you know, like I'm not going to begrudge another horror film. I, I do like horror. And so the, the horror aspects were what caused me to even see this film. So maybe that's maybe that's the, the price I had to pay. The horror drew me and the drama got me. But overall, I think this movie is a rental. I liked a lot about it. There were a few things I didn't love. But overall, I think it's, it's worth a rental. And so that is Repossession. It's available digitally in North America. You can check it out uh, pretty much on any platform and watch it in the comfort of your own home. So let me know what you thought about the film. Let me know if you had other kind of interpretations of it, if there were other things that you noticed. I'd be very curious to hear if other people maybe think that I'm off base or have other theories about what was happening in the film. Uh, I'd love to talk about more. So thanks so much for watching and, and please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Then please check out my other content. I've got other movie reviews, interviews, unboxing videos, and weekly movie recommendations. Thank you. Thank you.